hi i hope everyone has had a great great week um we have a, another good lesson in store for today and that lesson is god gives the ten commandments and it's from exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 17. and with today's lesson it's a familiar lesson because most of us who've been in church for a little while we probably had vacation Bible school or youth church or something had to learn the Ten Commandments along the way but even though it's a familiar passage it's still good to look at it with new and fresh eyes and try and get a deeper understanding of the word so let's have a moment of prayer and then we'll dive right into our lesson God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this week. We thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. We thank you for your instruction that you gave to Israel that we now can study as a model for our lives. God, now we ask you to, that you give us strength to hear your word and see your word and study your word on today. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Thank you. Amen. So, let's get started with the first two verses of Exodus chapter 20. So, let's read verses 1 and 2. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So, remember last week, we talked about whenever giving instruction, it's good to give some context and background as to for why... Um, instruction is needed and we see God speaking directly to the children of Israel right now he's giving them the context of why he's saying that now he tells them I am the Lord thy God he reminds them he brought them out of Egypt so it's just not like he's just um, hollering down these orders but he's giving them the context because they need all this as they're trying to prepare to become a nation now, throughout the Old Testament, there are 613 laws that were given. And this is the time, only the first time and only time that we see God speaking directly to the children of Israel. So, with these Ten Commandments, He's speaking directly to them. So, He's given that background of His relationship with Israel. So let's let's keep going and see what exactly is the instructions that God gives. And they really can be broken up into two parts. And the first part is instructions about how to deal with God. Because this is about building a relationship with his children. So he gives instructions about how to deal with him. And so let's read verses 3 through 11. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, or thy stranger is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So we see some commandments being given out here. And that first commandment was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Israel is not to have any other gods. Now they've been in Egypt. They've seen the, the Egyptians have 
multiple gods. <laughs> you know, Pharaoh, and they saw the war between God and Pharaoh constantly keep in battle. So with all those little minor gods and things that they had in Egypt, they were had been exposed to that. As well as as they're passing through different lands on their way to Canaan, they're seeing other people worship um, false gods and a different gods and not the God of Israel. So God had his first commandment to them is don't put no other God before me. I don't care what you've seen along your way. I am the Lord thy God. Put me first. So the second commandment God gives is, you shall not make any graven images, meaning they're not to have idols. They're not to create the idols out of all kinds of different materials that he lists in those verses. He also gives a warning about the punishment for breaking this commandment. He says, I am a jealous God. Punish, and he will punish generations. You know, I think it said the third to the fourth generation, right? Until the fourth, the third, and fourth generation. That's a long time to have to um, have punishment for a sin that was created by the first generation. Even with that warning, Israel struggles with this throughout Israel's history. When you read the Old Testament, you know, idolatry, the worship of other God of idols continues to be is a struggle for the children of Israel but guess who else is a struggle for us in today's time we have idols too we have people who struggle with and probably from time to time you know if you be honest with yourself I struggle with it you struggle with it but we have to when we know better we do better so that's what sometimes we we, we have to be reminded of that no uh, no idols so the third commandment, take, do not take the Lord's name in vain. When you take the Lord's name in vain, well, it means that you're misusing the Lord's name. And it's going against God's reputation. So think about the reputation that God has. He says it at the very beginning of our text today. I'm the one that brought you out of bondage. I brought you out of, of Egypt. Throughout the, his bringing them out, He's been a provider. He's been a pro protector. So if they go use the Lord's name in vain, they're misusing his name. And if we use the, his name in the wrong way, we're, mis we're going against God's reputation. So the next commandment is remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. <laughs> Sabbath, day of rest. That's what that, that name means. That's what it means in the Hebrew. It means rest. And the Lord gives context within that commandment. He created the earth and he rested on the seventh day. So let's keep moving along and see the second set of second part of the Ten Commandments. And those are the instructions about how to deal with God's people. So let's keep reading and read verses 12 through 17. Honor thy father and thy mother that they Thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So, the first commandment that deals with people is honor thy father and mother. This is really a groundbreaking commandment when you think about it because it puts men and women as equal. It doesn't just say honor thy father, which was what most of the laws, most of the text deals with the man in Israel's lineage. But this says honor thy father and thy mother, putting them on equal footing. So it's groundbreaking that way. And then also, as I was studying the lesson, something that came to mind as I was reading the commentary, this commandment wasn't written to children. As children, we are taught this commandment over and over again. <laughs> you know, in our modern context, the honor thy father and mother meaning to respect and listen to what our parents say. But when the commandments were written, this was directed to adult people. So what it really boils down to is a cultural thing not to 
discard your parents or push them to the side when they're no longer able to say work in the fields or, or provide any income to the family. Some people may at that time may have looked at the elders as being a burden to the family. So the God is telling, nope, honor your father and your mother, take care of your elderly parents. So the next commandment, thou shalt not kill, that's pretty self-explanatory. You shouldn't be taking anyone's life. That's a definite no-no. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So, you know, people try to leave that up to uh, interpretation because sexuality is such a sensitive topic in the, the, the context of the church. But adultery, having sex outside of marriage. The reason that this commandment is important for the establishment of Israel is that people have to build trust. And there has to be trust within the family. And so trust between husband and wife, trust amongst the children to know that their parents are staying together and being faithful to one another within the context of marriage. The next commandment, thou shalt not steal. It's another commandment that's helping promote trust within this new nation as they're developing. So they can trust one another that they're not going to take each other's possessions. Also, when you think about it, it's a disrespect to God to steal. God is the provider. He's providing food, water. We've seen that in our lessons so far um, this quarter. So when so if someone was going to steal, they are disrespecting God. The next commitment, thou shalt bear, not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Simply tell the truth. Just tell the truth. The last commitment, don't covet your neighbor's wife, man servant, maid servant, ox, donkey, anything that belongs to your neighbor. So when we say covet, that means being envious, desiring somebody else's stuff. And this is really the com a commandment that is internal. You know, you might not be able to visibly see someone uh, being covetous, but it's something that's in the mentality and the heart of a person. So that's that's like a brief wrap up of the commandments. One thing I did want to touch on before. Um, before we get through our lesson is that people some people may argue that we're not bound by these commandments anymore because those are under the law that's the Old Testament when Jesus came um, he brought grace but Jesus also spoke about each one of these commandments in his teaching and if, if we were in in our regular Sunday school setting and we would go through each of those ten but I don't want to make the, the um, video too long but just think about the example of the Sabbath he stayed in constant friction with the Pharisees because of this thing about the Sabbath. And that the intent of these laws were all throughout Jesus' teaching as, as in when he was talking to them about the Sabbath. So our lesson takeaways are very simple today. Do right by God. One of my favorite pastors is Pastor E. Dewey Smith. And he always says this, if you do if you be good to God, he will be good to you. And in, a, in the Ten Commandments, we see how we can be good to God by not putting other gods before him, no idols, do not misuse the Lord's name, and keep the Sabbath. The second takeaway, do right by God's people. Very simple. Don't steal. Don't kill. Honor your parents. Tell the truth. And don't be envious of others. So that is our lesson on the Ten Commandments. I hope you got something out of it. Our lesson next week will be God Confirms the Covenant. And that will be from Exodus 24 verses 1 through 11. I hope you have an awesome, awesome week. And I will see you next week.